There are thousands of Christians who are paralyzed by the attitude that they really wouldn't want to, to, to feel that it's possible for them to do that. That after all, they're just sinners. We know you're sinners. Don't be so proud of it. <laughs> be a saint for a while. You hear what I'm saying to you? There is a place where you and I must never forget the pit from whence we've been digged. There is a place where you and I can never forget what unworthy creatures we were when God got his arresting hand on us. But to make that your daily declaration that that's what you are now is another violation of faith. I am what God says I am. And God says I am tonight in the process of being made like Jesus. I'm not as good as I should be, but I'm better than I was. Now look, I'm, I'm not spinning yarns. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to take this scripture and apply it to you that you and I are to rejoice in the prospect of being better than we are. Let's say, hallelujah, I can be better. Come on, hallelujah, I can be better. Sometimes that sounds like boasting. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. But we're boasting in the Lord. The Lord has told us that we can rejoice in the hope. You know, when we talk about what's going to ultimately happen, and we talk about the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covering the earth as the waters come to the sea, what do you think that is? What do you think that is? Do you, do you think that's some, some gigantic aurora borealis flashing across the sky, or, or some magnificent sunset that engulfs the earth? Is it some kind of a physical phenomenon? No. The glory of God covering the earth is when the number of God's people is so great and the moral attributes of God are so manifest through the redeemed community that the earth is literally dominated by righteousness, or as Peter says, this is our hope to have a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, the glory of the Lord covering the earth. Now, what's the alternative to that, people? See, the, the pessimistic eschatologist, he, he, his alternative isn't good. Instead of Jesus going out of history victoriously or ending history victoriously, he's got the devil ending victoriously. And so instead of the earth being covered with the glory of the Lord, the earth is covered with the demonic and the diabolical. Well, what did Jesus come to do? He came to destroy the works of Satan. He came to cast out demons. He came to wreck Satan's house. He came to destroy the strong man's fortress. He came to release righteousness. He, he came to do what I, I heard Dick reading tonight, give the kingdom to the saints. Jesus Christ came to be victor. victor. In, in the book of Revelation, when that first horse started out, the scripture simply says that horse went down through the centuries conquering and to ultimately conquer. The principle of righteousness must ultimately conquer. The, the path of the just groweth brighter. The darkness can't arrest the light. What is all this celebration of darkness that I hear from Christians? You're impeding the whole process of God's intention. Righteousness is riding down through the century. Righteousness has got a grip on the throne of history. Righteousness is the ultimate victor. Jesus Christ uh, and righteousness is riding down through history. And man is panting his last. He's run out of options. He's gasping. The whole thing is being wound up like a, an old garment. Why? Because righteousness is about to burst forth. The city of God is going to come into manifestation. Hallelujah. 